Hello, Namaste. I welcome you all to the 37th session of Guru Bodha. Today we have with us Dr. M.B. Guraja, sir. Uh, this, this class is made live uh, possible for all Easy Ayurveda uh, weekly class subscribers. And coming to the topic of the day, this, this question was asked in one of the previous classes. Uh, about the causes for cramps, starting from depletion of minerals to uh, plain aggravation of vata, causes of cramps can vary. Definitely, even the Vega Dharana also leads to Pindikot waste, and I would say to cramps in the legs. Very commonly, we can come across many patients, those who are having a constipation, is a main cause. I mean, <coughs> that is uh, one of the important uh, leading causes many times we come across in pra practice. Of course, the decrease in potassium, calcium or magnesium and variation of these minerals definitely leads to there is a cramps in the legs, particularly during the summer season when a lot of uh, fan or something like that it is used and people are um, not interested to go for uh, cover their body with some blankets or something like that. Then there will be totally their body is exposed to uh, fan uh, blow uh, that is a wind. So that leads to uh, early morning cramps in the legs is very common one and of course there is a um, blockages in the vein or maybe venous insufficiency and such type of things are there that also leads to a lot of um, cramps in the legs otherwise nerve involvement due to various reasons old age and sitting for a long duration may get cramp all these things are very common and of course, many things, including the sun and on this earth, everything is possible to cause an allergy. Similarly, for leg cramps, anything can be added, diabetes, arthritis, Parkinson's, dehydration, mineral imbalance, alcohol consumption, excessive work, so many things. Maybe the, the chemical drugs, they are using it. So there are so many, so many things are there. But individually, when a patient comes to us with a particular complaint, we need to take out a very clear history out of them and then come to pinpoint what may be the cause in this case and accordingly remove the cause. That is the only way we can handle these conditions. There are you know many Ayurvedic points that are uh, explained, but uh, uh, it is explained as what is the Nanathmaja Vikara, Pindiko, Dvestana or cough muscle cramps is explained as what is the Nanathmaja Vikara and all these things that you told uh, starting from dehydration or excessive uh, body activity sitting in uh, irregular posture or impro improper sitting and sleeping postures largely it appears as if a water problem sir definitely it is whenever there is a direct obstruction to the path of water it leads to pindikot waste none. that we need to understand that purely vata but when sometimes even vata gets the avarana then also we will have these type of things yes sir because a deficient blood supply is told and also again a purusha vega dharana meaning habitual suppression of urge to defecate is also kind of a blockage or kind of a avarana so so sort of blockage leads to uh, peculiarly, any sort of blockage usually leads to vata increase, sir. Definitely, vata having chalaguna, anything which is blocking the chalaguna of vata and thereby making it is inactive, and vata is the one which has a gati. And if you something blocks the gati of the vata, definitely it is going to abruptly increase the vata locally, and that leads to usually pain sensation. I mean, while searching for this word Pindiko Dvestana in various textbooks, I found a, a unique uh, reference. This is from Tarak Samhita Prabhav, if I'm not wrong. It says that if uh, Vamana Virechana, if they are done without proper Snehana and Swedhana, it causes increase of Rukshata or dryness in the body. And then that can again lead to muscle cramps. So, uh, probably there is some Rukshata or dryness involved in the uh, causation of uh, muscle cramps. It also again emphasizes the oleation and high dose of uh, fat intake and then sweating treatment, which are very much required before doing any sort of panchakarma. Sir. Particularly in case of woman and virechana, when there is a vega, there will be rapid movement of diaphragm, and that rapid movement will be causing a negative pressure in the body. And if 
to overcome those negative pressures if proper oleation and fermentation is not done then there is a chance of damage to the muscle fibers even the ligaments and the tendons that also leads to lot of cramps and all these things and even sometimes the patient may come with a teared muscle because of this reason so that's why in the acharya is very clear that before going for any women and vilachana such a panchakarma procedures better to go for a proper snehana and svedana then do the things and again mamsa kshaya leads to pindika shushkata dryness of uh, or dryness and weakness of calf muscles and then in, there is another last option called as mamsa jwara fever afflicting mamsa that so overall uh, we are learned the causes then you know how to approach this whether to approach this as a stand alone symptom or we have to look at the whole body and so basic thing is that taking the history when we are collecting the history from the patient then we need to assess all these things so when we know that these are the possible causative factors we try to elicit that whether any of these things are with uh, present with the present case so in that sense we need to check each and everything the whether in the deficiency states or any circulation defect or any pitikot waste uh, due to uh, suppression of purusha vega or maybe due to constipation or something like that or whether it is working too much standing for a longer duration and excessively uh, doing the things increased vata all these parameters whether he is not consuming regularly any grita or something like that and whether he is not applying any oil to the body uh, any that such practices are there or not so all these things one by one we will take the history through questionnaire and uh, of course certain thing times by observing whether the body is uh, dry or it is uh, sufficiently snigdha then accordingly we can try to elicit and finalize that this may be the probable cause of this condition then most of the time of course it is a primarily a involvement of vata and sometimes due to some other dhatus once again vata is disturbed so ultimately our target will be to nullify or quench the vata or suppress the vata in a proper manner by the way of ushna tikshna snigdha dravyas so for that purpose we need to go for a hot fermentation and the proper snehan and sevana is the only thing that can be done that will definitely going to reduce all these pains and circulation part of it also will be increased because of the heat the del be dilatation and then the blood supply will be improving then of course it will break open the avarana then all these things everything will be touched upon by using a proper snehana and followed by a proper svedana that will give you the results any particular oils that you would uh, think about for to apply extramarisa particularly for these cases uh, i prefer sahacharya taila that will be very good it is one of the best thing for the adogata vata or the serpentico dvesha these type things so i mean correct me uh, correct me assumption that usually this wherever this uh, stiffness and twitching and joint stiffness there to relax the ligament tendons involved and also the muscles this sacharadi is one of the best ones sir it's all our interpretation with based on these things but acharya has very clearly said where there is a adogata vata and particularly from the pelvis and downwards sacharadi is one of the leading oil to be prescribed so it's very clearly it is going to help in these conditions of course you can even go for the balashuga and the lakshadi taila also but the first choice would be sacharadi and if it is uh, there is a mamsa kshaya leading to the bindikodvesha and such other things then better it is going we should select maha masha taila so like that very typically we need to depending upon the condition we need to select the oils any any oral medicine of choice that you have for all this muscular pains at least to relieve the pain with respect to muscle origin usually in these cases i will go for the gandharva astadi kashaya it will be better it will give you the results along with gandharva astadi kashaya i prefer to go with some neurocare or some kshirabala type of drops or even hingvastu kachurna that will reduce the pain sensation and everything will be suppressed basically you are looking for vata anulomana as a yes definitely there's a question here that for lower body pathology sacharadi taila is told 
is, is there any specific oil mentioned for the upper body as well sir usually you just observe that pradhana sthana for vata is pakvashaya pakvashaya kati sakti sotra asti sparshanendriya very clearly in those areas where the dominant of vata is there there we need to first we need to regularize or streamline apana vata if apana vata is regularized and streamlined automatically samana vata vyana vata and everything will be in line if apana vata becomes urdhvagata then it becomes udavarta then it leads to disturbance in all other vatas so that's why its apana vata has to be maintained properly so in that purpose sacharadi is the best one then otherwise then we will go for the gandharvasta adikashaya and any oil containing gandharvasta with uh, karpuradi something like that for the penetration actions or any circulatory defect if you feel then we can go for the karpuradi taila which is having the vaso dilatation effect so such type of concept to be keep in kept in mind and we need to use the or select the drugs i mean oils for these conditions yeah so basically everything depends on the underlying cause so rather than addressing the muscle cramps as a standalone symptom we have to go for digging up the causative factors and uh, there's a question here can we mix hacharadi with mahamasha tailam for leg cramps definitely see basically any oil for a first uh, first line or a first statement or opening statement if i want to make it any oil would be definitely good be good but when you said which is best then i suggested sacharadi any oil whatever even kheerabala also can give you result but provided if you want to select always we we say that whenever we select any what do you call the protocol or treatment always the best would be selected so best in this condition is sacharadi I, i keep on getting i mean hair oil mixture we had uh, discussed that in one of the previous classes as an ayurveda student we should first enlist all the herbal oils and then get to know specific action of specific oils so if if that is clear then we can go for mixing also so as long as the logic behind the use of individual oil matches then you can mix and then can obstructed marmas lead to the cramped situation as well so marma is usually where different components such as blood vessels nerves uh, muscle joint bone joints etc are meeting uh, i mean because it is classically a muscle cramped situation only the mamsagata marmas would be involved but uh, rather than looking into that from an ayurveda standpoint we look this through the avarna and vata vata increase and de- increase of rukshata in those terms right sir see we need to understand any condition if it is there we need to go for amshamsha kalpana it should be made bifurcated into smaller pieces and try to understand and then try to make the chain where is the connection simply if it is a the marmasthana you go with some marma chikitsa it is some vadasthana you go with no it is not that it becomes a generalized treatment specifically customizing a treatment protocol for a patient if you are doing definitely you need to understand and assess prakruti of the person age of the person bala of the person time of the year when this condition is causing and what is his occupation everything and needs to be checked in and what is his way of uh, consuming food and how much liquid he is consuming whether dehydration is there whether the other lakshanas with related with any deficiency states are there any kshaya is the reason which is causing the disease or any obstruction to the path of vata or obstruction to the path of rakta or any nerve sensation or any injury to the nerve all these to be assessed so once you assess the things and finalize based on that then accordingly selecting it oil i have got three oils can i mix three oils yes you can mix but what is the logic behind that so that you need to understand when you are able to mix oil you should give a logic behind that why you want to mix those two oils or three oils breaking down everything into the shrutas involved and the dhatus involved the doshas and subtypes of doshas involved that's the way, way to go rather than you know simply uh, assessing one point and uh, treating their uh, point well taken sir and then uh, and this can be used at the time the person is having cramps or this is to be used to addressing the root cause and i mean the oil application uh, especially probably that is uh, the question there 
I, I, and to add to that, I would say that these modern liniments could be useful there, sir, because they, they usually they have camphor, menthol, etc., and they would uh, uh, warm up the muscles, so relaxation will happen a little faster. Definitely, they, um, it's the intention of using Karpura Tela, some liniments containing menthol, thymol, and these other things. It's very clearly to improve the blood circulation, causing a vasodilatation there. So vasodilation is done and uh, blood circulation is improved. What will happen? See, there are some. Uh, if you, from the modern point of view, if you take it, there are certain chemicals which is responsible to trigger the pain sensation are locally secreted like prostaglandin and certain other things. When a rushing of blood occurs by the dilatation of the vessels, this concentration of these chemicals at a particular point drops down. Definitely when these things drop down, pain sensation also drops down. So that is a basic reason when there is something which is causing a pain sensation that should be flushed out from that area. For that, we need to select a Ushnadravya and when it is sukshma and very penetrative in nature and which causes a dilatation. So definitely Ushna Tikshna and Sukshma Dravya will do definitely these type of things and definitely the blood circulation will improve to that area and once blood circulation is improved automatically it flushes out the, uh, the reason or the chemical which is responsible for the pain sensation all these things will happen. And also I would assume if we are doing local Abhyanga with say Sacharati Thaila just uh, uh, doing it once or twice would not be sufficient at least uh, two to three weeks of abhyanga on a daily basis would be very helpful to uh, keep the vata under, under check and to solve the problem for the long term see that's a, once again I, I would like to say that we need to assess while taking the history from the patient since how long they are suffering from this what is his age condition whether it is any blocks are there I cannot simply without saying that uh, three weeks is required, two weeks is no, we cannot. Each and every patient we need to assess in this fashion, then finalize it, then finalize the treatment protocol. Then how long it should be taken? Any oil treatment it should be given at least for seven days. Beyond seven days, it's usually of less importance. Then we need to give a gap. So this type of concept will come into play. Then accordingly, we can plan each and every time that DCM and the protocol of the treatment will differ from one patient to other. Not every patient will have similar type of things. Ultimately, their presenting complaint would be one, same, the pain in the, the cough muscles. But what is the reason for that? Since how long they are suffering and what is the intensity of the pain, everything matters here. It does cramps happen due to withholding of urine? So, in the Vega Dharana uh, explanation chapter in uh, Sangrade and also Charaka Samhita, Purvisha Vega Dharana is specifically mentioned, meaning uh, withholding of defecation is mentioned as a specific cause for Pindikot Vestana. And with respect to urine, it is not mentioned. And uh, with respect to urine, I found two uh, references. One is that excessive use of diuretics leads to loss of salts, le leading to cramps. And in case of Uttravasti treatment, soon after medicine administration, if the patient does not rest and indulges in excessive walking, uh, probably Apanavata and Vata at the level of lower limbs would increase and that, that, that would again cause Pindikot Vestana. Sir, please, your opinion. Very clearly, Uttravasti is a very sensitive treatment protocol. It is not any other simply Basti. So Uttravasti while giving, particularly in case of a female, it will be further difficulty. So when you are giving such type of bastis, definitely we are trying to catch hold the, some tissues and then put a catheter or something like that and push the things. So definitely they are going to cause a certain pain. And in during that type of pain and all these things, patient needs to be at rest. Soon after that he starts doing walking and doing anything, then definitely that leads to Udhavartha. Then Udhavartha will definitely going to cause pain. Even the Adogata Vata, that also very clearly leads to uh, pain. Like it is said, Adovatasya Rodhyana Gulma Udhavartha Ruklamaha. Very clearly, if Adovata has been blocked or suppressed, definitely it also leads to Gulma Udhavartha and these type of things. Definitely even, see observe that once if Apanavata is disturbed, 
it leads to disturbance in samana vata vyana vata and even to up to prana vata also there will be difficulty there is a question regarding growing pain in kids but if you can give a detailed case presentation with history etc uh, that will help us and generally speaking kids having pain in the legs during night time and i to has uh, seen my, like my daughter has also comp- complained probably due to daily activity they'll be hopping and jumping and due to sports etc probably that is the main cause sir that is one reason the other reason is the continuous expansion of the longitudinal bones they will be continuously growing and their expansion is causing a pressure on the uh, system and if sufficient calcium and all these things are there then usually we don't find any problem in growing children if there is a calcium is not optimal in body or some deficiency is there in that then in such child or kids usually when they do a lot of activities and then by evening they will start complaining of pain so for this once again balashulanda daila will be best along with sahajradi we can use a combination here which will support the growth and the muscle bulking and as well as in the bone toning purposes so you can use this even mahamasha with uh, sachradi can also be used and it will regularly you need to go for an abhyanga of the calf muscles as well as the lower limb muscles and even the bone then definitely that regular activity we doing that type of things definitely it will help i get this question quite commonly for the children who are already healthy just to improve the strength of uh, muscles bones joints for the you know proper health maintenance which oils can be useful mahamasha taila or balashugandha the looks perfect for that sir balashugandha the would be the best for the children where there is only emaciation or very weakness or weak muscles are built is very less then in that cases mahamasha would be best there's a question which is partially related we are talking about vata dosha increase in summer with such high temperatures we start using fans and acs uh, which further aggravate the and the already aggravated vata due to grishma ritu so what are the healthy practices instead of uh, instead to stay cool without aggravating vata one is the very clearly the maintaining the hydration part of it consuming madhur rasa which is going to suppress the vata and also fulfills the nutrition part of it second thing is little bit of abhyanga as far as possible then avoiding the fan would be best but if it is not possible then try to put on a one small or the what you call very fine uh, blanket on your body while sleeping so that the vata will not be gushing against your body throughout the night which may leads to pain that may not happen you can wear just to go have one blanket or thin blanket at least up to waist you can cover it up otherwise it will definitely will have a problem and there is you know strong news blinking from the last week that you know major heat wave is uh, you know sweeping across north india and middle part of uh, india like temperatures are soaring 45 plus degrees celsius i am not too much use of uh, air conditioning would uh, would hurt the health and you know cause all those imbalances and what not unavoidable the situations using it probably as close to the uh, normal temperature as possible or using it sparingly or uh, keeping a timer and using it for only couple of hours at night i am in favor of that sir what's your opinion yes definitely we can go with the cooling part of it but if you are putting some timer and restricting the usage and everything and it depends on the person to person it will be good no no issues with that we can use it but what i suggest is when you are using a fan during summer at least cover your lower part of the body with a thin blanket that will be best to avoid these type of cramps yes sir uh, thank you sir and i, I remember from charu samita that they have explained like a uh, and these things like ushira which is dipped in water and rose which is dipped in water and there should be many water pots here and there probably they were thinking about a older ancient version of acs there is a very typical way of cool air going or passing through with a comfortable speed but many times we adjust the fan and all those things and we want that to be on just gushing like anything cold wind 
we increase that that by giving a extra pressure to the fan and uh, increase the speed definitely that will going to cause problem if it is a very mild it's blowing no problem direct air exposure is a problem and uh, out of all the solutions you know having a blanket covering the lower limb uh, looks very uh, logical is it okay to okay for children to take supplements i mean with supplements and all if you can give uh, information that will be helpful see regarding uh, supplements and all those things whatever you consume until unless if you don't have proper agni to digest it and assimilate it it is totally waste so in order to have any effect or good effect of supplements better try to keep up the agni first so we, there are typical herbs which is explained in ayurveda which increases the agni try to concentrate on that if once kaya agni is improved or agni increased definitely it further enhances all the other agnis inside the body dhatva agni as well as the bhuta agni so in order to have a good effect of these supplements or whatever the food we consume agni is, is a must and it should be in proper format but with, with this supplements which are available in say multi level marketing style of uh, supplements which is which has which have become suddenly famous in uh, india and also a lot of paper advertisements on various ayurveda products we need to be double careful recently there was uh, there was a very famous like international level famous mlm multi level marketing a company which became very famous with the ayurvedic and uh, the vitamin supplements etc so they were caught with illegal activities and there are many reports of uh, continuous misuse of uh, those supplements and some some were found to be toxic and all unless and until we understand the logic behind it and we are very sure about the safety precautions taken by the companies we should be very careful so see not only that we need to understand that why we need to give supplements to children if they are deprived in that supplements then you go and go and give the supplements unnecessarily when there is no question whether we don't know whether the person is or a child is deprived of the particular chemical i mean mineral maybe magnesium selenium and all those things then we don't we never assess it simply just because it is said it is good to body you are giving it then that may be leads to overdosing or another issues so unnecessarily we should not go with that we always try to make sense in the way that better to collect or select the material or the supplements only if they are really required otherwise food is a very best one try to select a good type of food with all the shadrasas in that that will definitely going to give you all the requirement which is necessary for the body uh, there is a vitamin high vitamin d sort of a big problem in uh, especially in us like uh, it, it, vitamin d is good for uh, treating depression and many other uh, many other disorders so everybody starts taking vit- vitamin d and there are you know increasing number of cases of high vitamin d causing uh, kidney and bone pain related issues so un- until and unless there is deficiency do not such supplements would be the mantra definitely until until unless it is not required we should not go for the supplements and why supplements also we we need to be very choosy in selecting those supplements because many a times many supplements are multi level multi mix it contains vitamin b vitamin c vitamin d uh, alpha lipo pro, um, proteins and uh, even many many things and uh, omega 3 um, multi system they want to just to market and address everybody they have mixed everything into that whether such combinations going to help us in any way that is a big question mark see you may have a very good teacher you may have a very good material you may have every books and everything but at that still at the end you may not be able to score as or get a seat in medical colleges or anything like that what is the reason whatever you read it you need to be absorbing those things and holding those information if it is not done then what it is totally useless so that is the, that's what i am telling that is the agni the proper agni should be there then only whatever it is been given to you that will be taken into system so until unless we we never understand this part of it just by simply giving a supplement will definitely help it no it is not going to help in any way and yeah and wherever possible with with respect to supplements if if it can be solved through through natural foods it is always good and uh, recently i read a report that this unpolished rice shali is the main staple food 
in many parts of India and even in Ayurveda also shali is used externally, internally, uh, etc. This unpolished uh, rice has 3 grams of protein and then 1 gram of fat, it contains carbohydrates, uh, that's there. Then it also is a good source of fiber and all. But what we do is like polish it and take out all those extra things and rice has become very synonymous with starch and carbo carbohydrate. With rice what you get carbohydrate. But we have created a problem to ourselves and then we want to go with supplements or other superfood. Definitely. See, we are trying just to remove all those good old practices practiced by grandma. We mean sidelined in the name of uh, science and advancement and the latest things in the many attempts. If you are telling that this is to be done, it is for good. Then they will ask why, why it should be done. The same thing if it is explained in English, then children usually they are okay, we will follow it. Because that has been a mindset in many of us that something which is explained in English is always sounds good and it is better and we accept totally without uh, going even churning uh, those informations but very clearly unfortunately we are the one we are making a lot lot of mistakes in our uh, development as a humans and we come across so many chemicals created so many chemicals involved so many things into that and ultimately we land up in trouble and then we start searching for the cure uh, coming to a few questions uh, that have come here uh, can Ritu, Ritu Sandhi aggravate Vata dosha along with seasonal increase. Ritu Sandhi is when one season is ending and another season is starting. Seven days on the either side is considered as Ritu Sandhi. My understanding is that rather than Vata in particular, the doshas which are there in those particular seasons, those are involved and you know those will be aggravated or decreased or imbalanced rather than Vata in particular, sir? Definitely, there are many Ritu Sandhis throughout the year. In not all the Ritus will uh, will see come across the Vata Vardhana. Typically, in a particular season only, we can see when there is a next coming season, we will have a Vurdha Vata Avastha. Vata will be increased like um, Varsha Ritu. So, before that, there will be slight increase. So, in that fashion, it occurs not in every each and every Ritu, will have, Ritu Sandhi, we don't have uh, increased Vata. There is a traditional practice of doing periodic salt purgation, Rudu Virachana at home. Is this a good practice and at what frequency it, it can be done? I mean, as far as I know, I mean, only in the Pitta Pradhana Rutus, Sharad Rutu Virachana is, is told for all healthy people. What is the frequency and uh, how, what are the choices for Virachana, Dravya, Castor Oil, Trifla, etc. And please can you give some guidelines how to choose Virachana Dravya. Sir. See, very typically, if a person could be able to attend the nature call early in the morning as soon as he gets up from the bed without support of any other things because we have seen many times people consuming coffee in the morning or tea in the morning or drinking a lot of water or even uh, smoking and all those things then they will try to get the vega and then they pass these tools if a person could be able to get up in the morning and as soon as he gets up and try to attend the nature call and it will be clear if bubbles are cleared in such manner, then I don't think so. You need to go for a regular virechana for this type of persons. This type of persons doesn't require virechana. And these type of persons are suitable for virechana only in Sharadratu. For habitual or as a seasonal cleansing for that purpose, only in the Sharadratu, uh, when Pitta Prakopakala occurs, then only it can be used. Otherwise, those who have a problem with the constipation and all those type of things, then we need to go for certain materials. So once again, in those cases, very much planning should be customized. Whether the patient has a sufficient rukshata in the body, whether the patient is emaciated, whether it is an old age person or doesn't walk much in a day, all these things thing to be taken care of. We should not go and irritate the bubbles every time. That cannot be a suitable one. Only uh, very typically when there is a constipation or something like that, then we need to go for a, a typically a colon irritant material like Eranda, Eranda Taila or something like that. Once again, quantity also speaks a lot. Consuming 10 ml of Eranda Taila may be causing drastic purgation. Maybe 8 drops of uh, Eranda Taila in the morning may be very less and very comfortable to a person. So this is also one of the parameters. 
all these needs to be taken care of while designing the protocol for treatment not only simply that particular drug is selected and given and expected to be soft no it cannot be you need to calculate each and every concept of that whether the person's body weight the hydration part of it whether it is a sukumara all these thing to be taken care then whether it is a female a child or whatever it is everything it needs to be taken care and point at point then accordingly we can go for whether madhyama whether we we go for the uh, pravara or whether we go for the little bit uh, hasi hasi matra something like that so all these needs to be taken care and that can be understood by when we understand a patient in front of us with all details otherwise simply it becomes a theoretical thing and may not be suitable to be learn as a practical aspect practicality if you want to understand in these condition is that we need to have a strong theory make a strong theory based on this questionnaire try to correct the information then accordingly make a planning and whether you are selecting uh, trifula or whether selecting for the erenda thaila of course once again it depends on the condition what is prevailing inside general if you want to take it trifula would be good because it is comparatively milder it won't harm as much as um, 10 ml of erenda thaila can cause or irritation it may cause so for regular bowel cleansing purposes or to assist the bowel then simple trifula churna would be sufficiently enough for everybody but once again dose dependency will be there we need to strictly understand and adhere to the typical dose which can give you an ideal bowel cleansing so in a in a classical pitta uh, pitta pradhana disease so, so that is a chronic skin disease so you would uh, decide that say uh, one virechana might not be sufficient and many virechanas might be required and it is going to be a, a prolonged treatment so if there is there are two virechanas to be given what would be the minimum gap between those two virechanas that you would think of sir usually i in such case when there is a repeated virechana should be given a repeated vamana should be given i select usually monthly ones i'll go for practicality theory may be saying so many things but practically practically what i have observed is if i go with this pattern of um, doing abhyanga and all those things and snehana svedana everything then classical way of uh, virechana then once again repeating same thing in the next month almost one month i am mean 28 days later then definitely it will going to help me in improving the condition and it won't cause any untoward incidents thank you there and there is a question that in spring or vasanta rutu kapha naturally uh, gets aggravated we we learned that it is kapha prakopa kala can vata also get disturbed so for vata there is a specific uh, varsha rutu or rainy season after a heavy summer the uh, due to the wind and the cloud and, uh, and coldness they are told that vata increases so that is specifically told and uh, when the kapha is increasing in vasanta rutu maybe due to if the vata karan nidana or vata causative factors such as excessive walking excessive exercise and all for all those reasons probably it would increase but just with the nature of the season it would not vata would not increase i would assume sir see we need to understand what is the causes which help to increase the kapha dosha we know that what are the qualities of kapha dosha so any quality of kapha dosha a similar type of nidana if it is there then definitely those lakshanas will increase that's why we call it as guna roopi vriddhi there is a karma roopi vriddhi dravya roopi vriddhi so similarly in this you know, observe that vata and kapha shita guna is common in for both these doshas so if we in early spring or when is early summer in order to suppress the heat we may go for some cool drinks we may go for some ice creams such type of things are very common practices that's why those season and previous season was kapha kala shishi rutu and due to the heat in uh, spring and uh, summer it is getting diluted and it is starts oozing out and we, during that period if these type of food materials consume are consuming the um, juices definitely will increase the shita guna then shita guna is common for both kapha and vata then definitely there will be a, a mild chance to 
enhance the vata to some extent but it prominently enhances the kapha because the season and previous season and the present nidana all are supporting dominantly kapha but partially it is also uh, supporting vata so there may be a partial rise in vata but prominent rise in kapha thank you for elaborate uh, answer sir and uh, there was a question on preservative use uh, please speak about preservatives in ayurvedic medicines especially preservatives like parabens titanium oxide etc which can even uh, damage even in small quantities sodium benzoate is also used theoretically uh, ayurveda should be free from preservatives but somewhere theory should meet practical aspects as well sir see very clear if you want to avoid these chemicals then we cannot prepare kashayas we are supposed to give our patients very clearly kwata churnas kwata churna should be given and ask the patient to prepare kashaya every time then quantum of material taken process involved reduction involved m may not be very conducive and cannot be handled by each and every patient very legitimately then ultimately at the end of the day what kashaya they take it it may be padavashesha it may be ardavashesha it may be astavashesha we don't know and they don't know and definitely its effect on the body will vary in order to avoid that we need to give them kashaya but kashaya's life span or the shelf life time is only 24 hours so in order to avoid that getting stale we need to go for some preservatives what sort of preservatives we are going and those preservatives which are approved by the consent authorities and which is used since many years in a particular concentration and um, it can be used and regarding those preservatives causing any damage or anything like that see each and everything including a food can act as a poison for us that depends not everybody will have same type of effect so, but once these uh, preservatives used in an admissible level definitely not going to cause any issues it can be taken open mind it can be taken we are not administering like this kashaya and etc for life we are administering it only for a specific period of time to address a specific concern and these are you know as per drugs and cosmetics acts and rules so everything is regulated so as long as we are following rules we are fine with that but uh, at least as far as possible in the herbal oils and herbal ghees and wherever possible a limited use or no use of uh, wherever it can be avoided best um, it, it is best for the uh, health of all to avoid preservatives sir see definitely in that sense we if you are very fearing about the preservatives and all those things then uh, the book also says that under the sun above the earth including earth and sun everything can cause allergy then where you will run it is not possible and it will not be the same thing for each and everybody somebody may have a in the individual sensitivity that needs to be addressed accordingly so that's why based on that information that it may be carcinogenic in higher doses or something like that thinking that it is carcinogenic for everybody ban it no it is not like that we need to adjust with that just like how corona virus it is keep on coming even after second vaccination third vaccination booster doses and still it is changing its style and coming once again so then they are saying that we need to learn to live with the virus so that is what happening even in these things also preservatives and all these things we know that they are some may cause damage then we know where to draw a line not to cross that then reduce wherever it is possible wherever it is inevitable just use it another point that you that you mentioned like some people are habituated to drinking cup of water some people drink like half a liter of water just to get their bowel movements in the morning some people have to smoke before they uh, they go to washroom with this bowel movements psychological dependency is very very frequently seen and as far as possible we should avoid that only if we do certain thing will i'll get bowel movements so, so such a thing should be avoided as far as possible sir see it entirely depends on the gut, gut health when how you best you maintain your gut health by using what type of foods every day to, i mean throughout the day you are eating a very pungent and astringent and hot sort of a sore material and everything and ultimately in the next morning you are expecting that you should have a smooth bubble no it is not possible very clearly ayurveda has said katu tikta kashaya these type of uh, dravyas if you consume 
in a large quantities or even uh, dominancy then it is going to cause bhadda bind mutrata very clearly it is going to cause a constipative effect on the body so you need to understand that how to balance the food and how to how much should be taken that is sufficiently enough for easy bowel evacuation and how to assess it it is from the reverse direction in the morning if you are able to get the bowels very neatly without anybody support or anything like that it's just naturally it is going out then assume that and accept that whatever you have done yesterday and what are the things you have consumed which was sufficiently conducive to the gut in order to maintain the gut health so that is the thing we we need to understand thank you mr regarding this dependency apart from this bowel movement thing uh, in in use of antidepressants or for sleep also some people have a particular ritual or particular supplement they get attached to even even with ayurvedic thing also if if a client has sleep problems and we give a medicine there are very high chances that they would continue that without our uh, approval because they, they simply think it as a sleep medicine i'm taking that and i'm getting sleep and also in children to improve intelligence there are lot many syrups and brain tonics in uh, uh, in the market so parents and also maybe the child thinks that only if i take those syrup my intelligence would improve there should be some effort from the doctor to avoid these sort of dependencies so, so that they also believe in their natural abilities as well sir this requires a lot of counseling habituation is a part and parcel of life there are certain people they are habituated for eating they will be voracious eaters and they, if you don't ask them if you ask them to not to eat so much then they will get annoyed and there are certain people they consume they go for the dependency later it converts into consumption of alcohol or consumption in uh, going for a smoking tobacco or something like that later the same thing uh, that mentality will drag on and continue with the any medication and once they get some medicine and they get a relief and they want to experience that relief throughout continuously and they feel that if i take this medicine i'll get this relief then let him continue so this fellow will be continuing this medication for a longer longer duration rather than the prescribed then ultimately it becomes an habituated one and it becomes a body will be accustomed in such a way that it becomes a dependent it develops a dependency on that particular drug so it is a role of doctor to some extent and but is largely it is the role of the patient when to stop all the things medicine for what purpose you are consuming that should be consumed till the target is achieved once target is achieved then proper weaning of those drugs should be done yeah i mean with without prescription patients taking medicines for long uh, term should be raised in in an all cause probably we have time for one last question when we experience sudden increase in vata symptoms like flatulence burping etc after doing some yoga therapy which are not sure suited for our condition may or may not be uh, should we assume that it is old vata coming out or can it be that uh, yoga aggravated vata dosha so just with little bit of flatulence and burping we should not be concluding that yoga is aggravating vata there sir see first of all we need to understand there are so many concepts that see what burping and flatulence and whatever it is it's coming out as apana vata it is mala mala vata it is not the dosha vata dosha vata is something different that we call it as a vayu when it becomes pathogenic then it is called as vata so that mala kapha even mala pitta it is entirely different from dosha pitta and dosha kapha so whatever we are passing out as a part or a burping and all these things this is just a mala vata we can take it as or vata dosha which is coming out and it is natural it should come out otherwise it will leads to vega dharana when there is a lot of uh, process takes place inside the body when digestion occurs and that leads to lot of by products produced and one of the by product is this vata that uh, mala vata which is produced and it needs to be evacuated and eliminated and that is one of the important uh, material which helps us to keep the body clean so that has that needs to be eliminated that's why even in a, in say in habitual Uh, constipation or you know having flatulence uh, you know the pavana mukta sana is is told and also vata going out or especially this malarupi vata going out is a good sign rather than worrying about 
what the dosha aggravation there so i thank all the participants for uh, all the active questions and thank, thanks for turning up and on behalf of all of, all of us i uh, extend my gratitude to dr gurudev sir for continuously supporting us thank you very much sir thank you thank you everyone thank you see you all next sunday namaste